So can you talk to us about like how did he like ran his organization? What he would do here? Because we talked about the um the lawsuit that uh totally. Lamar, uh, so now we've got all these data points. Let's like zoom out and yeah. sort of talk about like and, and and not really mince words like everything I'm about to say is kind of speculation, right? Okay. Based right. upon the evidence that we have. Okay. So just treat everything I'm about to say like speculation. And okay. I'm just going to not mince this words about what I kind of think. Gathered. This, is, like, this is just my opinion. But. Yeah, the facts you've gathered, this is kind of the conclusion that you've come to, right? Yeah. From, From what we know right now, it looks to me like Diddy was running a sexual blackmail ring in the music industry on behalf of his mob handlers, his mob handlers that is like the background of the music industry and has been for a long time and so he's running this sexual blackmail ring by basically being in the middle of hollywood he's famous he throws all these crazy parties and those parties sort of have tears where like lots of people get invited and then the after party is sort of like if you know you know and you can stay and he's definitely they're definitely abuse like all fucking each other but they're also pretty clearly also fucking young stars like justin bieber like usher when he was younger lots of those guys um lots of boys lots of girls but it also sounds like they are trafficking children in from the trafficking industry like not kids of fame not kids from hollywood but actually just like disposable children mm -hmm. and i'm starting to suspect that lots of kids are being killed or just dying from this abuse or from some of the like more sick dark kind of rooms that are happening at some of the parties probably um because that's kind of coming out of the whistleblower space and people are still afraid to talk about that more like you know the, the unalive kind of stuff um, he's definitely, there's drugs everywhere in every direction. Everyone's doing all kinds of drugs willingly and unwillingly. And we know that from lots of lawsuits Yeah, and it all adds up to sort of like the guy was put in place in order to manage our culture, in order to manage the music industry, in order to create blackmail and create debauchery, to fill the prisons, to sort of like debase the culture, to undermine the family, to undermine black culture, like that was, it just looks like that's what's been going on for decades here. And then he starts to get high on his own supply of power and just like it's more and more reckless and more and more reckless. And they are protecting him all through this time. But it seems like eventually it got hard enough to protect him or enough came out or like maybe like it kind of looks like Cassie just was brave enough to file a lawsuit at the right time when it was like the climate was as such that it was hard to kind of put a lid on it and her lawsuit was salacious enough and then it spurred enough other people to want to file lawsuits that they were kind of like did the math and realized like we got to cut ties with diddy we can't protect him from this and he's already a liability and i assume they've already got jay-z ready to step in and fill his shoes because everyone in the industry is talking about how jay-z is just as bad as diddy jay-z's at all these parties dj Khaled is at these parties drake is at these parties all these guys are fucking each other um they're all swapping wives and they're all swapping booty holes they're all throwing baby oil around like crazy um baby oil basically crazy. every male rapper that runs in those circles it sounds like and i mean obviously it's not all of them but at this point it seems like it's more of them than not because that kind of seems like how you have gotten a record deal over the last 30 years is like have some sort of blackmail on you be willing to do some sort of stuff you know do some favors for some people the whole industry feels pretty damn corrupt at this point um Shit. that's the overview of what's going on and that implies that Diddy is tied into the human trafficking networks in some amount, whether it's Diddy directly or whether it's his handlers like the mobsters, Fahim Muhammad, the people around him that are just supplying kids and girls and stuff. It implies that he's definitely tuned into the, the drug networks, obviously. He's tuned into the weapons and illegal weapons networks. Um, so he's tied all throughout these black market industries. Well, yeah, he had, he had AR-15 with the serial numbers obliterated in, in one of his homes. Exactly. So it's hard to understand exactly how much Diddy was in charge of his operation, but I find it impossible to believe that he was actually at the top in any way, like both from how he was brought up and put into position by Clive Davis. And then later Lucian Grange was overseeing him. Same early life story. And Lucian Grange is the CEO of Make Universal Music Group scroll. and Universal is like one third of the music industry right now. Music Universal Music Group manages Taylor Swift. Like all of the satanic weird stuff that's happening in music right now, a lot of those songs are coming out of Universal Music Group. And a lot of these record executives are related to each other, tied into each other. Like Lucian Grange's son, Elliot Grange. Here's a fun one. 
Elliot Grange is at Atlantic Records. He's in sort of like in one of the other thirds. Of, there's like three big music kind of like. Pull the scout. His name of. is Elliot Grange. You said. Yeah, Elliot Grange. Okay. That's Lucian Grange's son. Lucian is in charge of Diddy and Universal Music Group. Elliot Grange is coming up through the ranks over at Atlantic Records, and he just recently changed and got a new position and got got elevated. But Elliot is in charge of Ice Spice, right? Okay. And you remember how Ice Spice suddenly is best friends with Taylor Swift? Uh, like, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ice, it's together. like why is like Elliot Grange what's the other Taylor one? Swift was other hanging out again? with the twerk girl, like the the Down syndrome twerk girl, right? Who was and, the other? Who was the other? Elliot, I got Elliot Grange here, and then who was the other one? Uh, his dad, Lucian Grange. Lucian Grange. Let me look this up. And I look yeah, at the early so, life every single time. And so, Elliot Grange is like coming up through the ranks, and his star that he brought on the scene is Ice Spice. Like that's his like twerk star, and she's his number one star. And then it just so happens that his number one star, Ice Spice, just happens to become best friends with Lucian Grange's number one star, like Daddy's top star. Taylor Swift. So to me, that looks an awful lot like Taylor Swift has a contract for her boyfriend and she has a contract for her best friend. And that's how you can start to promote this like degeneracy in the Taylor Swift crowd by just get Ice Spice up there with no clothes on and make her shake her ass. Like, because that's all she does. Upside down um, cross to the Super Bowl and all this other bullshit, bullshit thrown up satanic Absolutely. Signs. Yeah. And so that's just to show that like the whole music industry, they're all tied together. Like they all know each other. They've all worked together. They've all brought each other up. Almost every single one of the executives, and a lot of them probably or certainly have ties to the mob um, in various forms. And all of sort of like, and this has been how the music industry has been for a long time, is like mobsters and gangsters teaming up to make music, but also to, you know, sell drugs, launder money, throw parties, all this other stuff. And that's just the history of the music industry. And today it's particularly perverse because it includes all this other child stuff and all this essay and all this blackmail. This episode is sponsored by Rumble Premium. The sponsorships from Rumble, one that is incredibly important to the survival of all of the companies. When Rumble first started in 2013, they built the platform for small creators and they didn't censor or have biases. They were fair, treated all creators equally and no one thought that pl these platforms would censor political conversations or censor opinions on the bear bug, but they did. Facebook admitted they fell into the pressure from the Biden and Harris administration, but Rumble did not. They held the line and they were attacked from daily giving us the voice to talk to you. They are attacked from corporate media. They are attacked by the governments like France. They are attacked from brand advertisers who refuse to work with them. Corporate America is fighting to remove free speech. Rumble is fighting to keep it. Rumble will not survive with brand advertisers. They don't get much of it. Watching our show on Rumble is the most that they ask from you. But if you really believe in this fight and you have the means, one major way you can help Rumble survive is joining Rumble Premium. Join the community that believes in the First Amendment and believes in our human rights to free speech. Rumble is offering $10 off with the promo code STUDIO when you purchase an annual subscription. Go to rumble.com slash premium and use the code STUDIO. Like I said, if you have the means and believe in the cause, now is the time to join Rumble Premium. And if you don't have the means, we're just happy to watch us on Rumble. So one more time, rumble.com slash premium, use the code STUDIO. And thank you, Rumble Premium, for sponsoring this episode.